feel like the story's been headed for me all along. I was born in Birmingham, Alabama in the summer of 1963, which was right after King's campaign and right before the bombing that killed the four girls at 16th Street Baptist Church. So I came into a very racially charged landscape and grew up in one. And um, like a lot of the white children in that era, a lot of my earliest, strongest bonds were with the black people who were being paid to take care of me. And so being a seventh generation descendant of slaveholders and being um, having these very close ties with people who could have been descended from people my ancestors could have owned. Those two different narratives came together in my life and it somehow became my job to weave them, those two different narratives, into one story and put all those different voices from those different experiences on equal footing. I started out centering the story around Richardson, who was inspired by a slaveholding ancestor of mine, because that's who I thought I had the right to write about. And then I found a three-line quote from an interview with a survivor of slavery who was asked directly about the breeding. And he said, yeah, there was a guy, his name was Joe, he was tall, he got to sit in the shade of the willow, he got the extra bacon, and uh, he was sent away um, on a Friday to a distant place where nine months later all these children were born. So when I started thinking about that man, and what's going through his mind as he's about to be taken away on that Friday. That's when I started hearing, that's when Wash's voice emerged. And it was so clear and it, it was, he had such psychological sophistication that I had to know who had raised him and how did he become the person who was navigating this incredibly complicated situation the way that he was. So I had to explore his life, his mother, his whole life story and weave his story together with Richardson, the slave holder, and also with Pallas, who's an enslaved midwife on a neighboring plantation. So I had these three voices, and I got the sense that they were all together somewhere, and that they had all heard each other, but they'd never been heard by anyone outside of their shared reality. And they would talk until they were heard, and they would talk to me. I don't know that I chose to use multiple narrators. I know that they were all talking at me, <laughs> and so I had to find a way to weave them all together. I think too many stories that I r was exposed to as a child were from one side or the other, and um, I think growing up in a segregated world made me kind of obsessed with trying to bring together what had been kept separate, trying to make one story out of all the stories. Mm -hmm. 